So do you feel the same like movement? Like there's more happening. There's going to be more venues. Like wh- how do you feel about this moment right now in India? Yeah, uh, for sure. There's more venues. Like having jazz bands. Yeah. Um, it's also very elitist kind of venues. Like yeah. whether it's the quarter or whether it's like um, there's an exclusivity there. Do you feel like you're reaching that point where there is an investment happening and money is coming into like the jazz scene for you at least? I think we waste uh, our money to the music, so we're making history right there. Mm-hmm. So as uh, we we created the music, that's the most important. Uh, how, how much money you can spend on day? Mm-hmm. Buy the house every day. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like there is a revival taking place? Do you feel like there are newer artists? There is this keen interest in jazz still, even now. Uh, is jazz uh, gaining new ground? <laughs> I began playing jazz in 1978. Yeah. I just said on resident contracts, and I began playing with musicians who are old enough to be my father. <laughs> Forty years down now, I'm playing with musicians who are old enough to be my children. <laughs> so you can see, jazz has evolved and continues evolving. It is here to stay and it's always gaining new ground. It's come a long way from when it originated in uh, New Orleans more than a century ago. It's evolved into just about every form of music. Jazz has always been open, alive and evolving, embracing just about every sound of music. You can call it a global form of music, it has reached every corner of the world. And it's no longer just about improvisation. Today jazz is a meeting of minds and cultures. So jazz has been there, is there and will be there. To the three of you, thank you so much for just enlightening us quite considerably. Thank you. Thanks so much to Emma, Colin, and Ren. Guys, please give them a round of applause.